Well, hey everybody, God bless you. It's Fred Kropp coming to you from the Healing Rooms here in Santa Maria, California. And I want to ask you a question. Have you ever had a hard time trusting God? I know we have a hard time trusting people and sometimes trusting even ourselves, but have you ever had a hard time trusting God? Well, today I want to talk to you about seven reasons that you can trust God. Before we go there, I want to let you know that I have a YouTube channel and it's under my name, Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P. If you go there, all these messages are posted there. I have over 300 messages. Go there, and when you get there, become a subscriber, and uh, click on the bell, and click like, and you won't miss any of these messages, all right? So, hey, uh, listen, how, how many have ever heard this scripture? It's Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all, that's right, you're already quoting it with me, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Another version says he will make your path straight. And so I want to jump into this and talking to you first. I want to talk about what are the blessings of those uh, to those who trust in the Lord. But let's pray and let's invite the Holy Spirit to speak to us. So Father, once again, we thank you. Uh, Lord, your word says in Psalms 37, trust the Lord, dwell in the land, and cultivate his faithfulness. So, Lord, we want to understand you're a faithful God, somebody that we can trust, we can count on, we can depend upon. And so, Holy Spirit, would you help us to know the truth and deliver us from any shakiness, any uh, questioning that we have about can we really trust God? Would you deliver us from any of the lies of the devil and bring us into the truth of God's word? I pray that in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can you say amen to that? That's right. Well, let me first just highlight some of the blessings that come to those who trust in the Lord. Psalms 2.12 says, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Psalms 32.10 says, he who trusts in the Lord Mercy shall surround, shall surround him. Uh, Isaiah 26, 3 says, You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Psalms 125 says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be removed but abides forever. So we see that trusting God causes us to have longevity in our Christian life. Uh, Proverbs 16, 20 says, Whoever trusts in the Lord happy is he. I like being happy. How about you? Uh, Proverbs 29, 25 says, whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. Uh, Proverbs, uh, Psalms 18, verse 30, it says, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all those who trust in him. And one of the verses that have saved me, uh, uh, passage of scripture that has saved me many times is Jeremiah 17 verses 5 through 8. I would mark this one down because this one will save you as well. How many of you ever put your trust in people and found out that didn't work out real good? Well, here's an interesting scripture through Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 5 and 8. It says, thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit, it, inhabit parched places in the wilderness in a salt land that is not inhabited. And listen to this. So it talks about cursed is the man who trusts in man. And so when we trust in man, it says we're going to depart from the Lord. But then verse 7 says, in the next couple verses, it says, blessed. I like blessed. How about you? It's better than cursed, right? Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose tr hope is in the Lord or trust is in the Lord. He shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by a river and will not fear when heat comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in a year of drought, nor cease from yielding fruit. So if you want to not be anxious in a year of drought, the key is to put your trust not in people, but in God. So I mentioned at the beginning, I want to talk, share with you just seven reasons that you can trust in God. They're real simple. You'll get them. Uh, you just need to own these, and this is going to help you. I know this has helped me so many times. Here it is. Here's seven reasons that you can trust in God. Number one, you need to understand that God sees the end from the beginning. God 
The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 46, 9, it says, it says, for I am God, there is no other. I am the God, there is no one like me, declaring the end from the beginning. So God doesn't live in a time-space world like you. You and I live within time, but God doesn't. God sees all time at the same time. God is at the beginning of your life, and he's at your funeral at the same time, and he sees everything in between. So who are you going to trust? You're going to trust somebody that, you know, nobody knows exactly what's going to happen tomorrow. Some people can predict certain things in certain areas, but nobody really knows what's going to happen tomorrow, next week. You don't know if you're going to be alive next week or not for sure. You don't know if you're going to be happy or sad or what's going to happen. You have no idea about the future, but here's the good news. God sees the end from the beginning. So when I know that God sees the end from the beginning, I know I can trust him. In other words, if I'm going to get advice, I want to get advice from somebody that knows what's going to happen next week, next month, next year, the next 10 years. And so God sees the end. That's number one. God sees the end from the beginning. Here's the second one. Second reason you can trust God. And I bet you figured this out. I hope you figured this out. God is smarter than you. That's right. You know, it's really helpful when you figure that out, that God's smarter than you. We think we're so smart. Uh, we, we think we can figure everything out. But the fact is that it says that the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. And so God is smart, smarter than us. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 40, it says, Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. In other words, God knows everything. That's one of his qualities. He's omniscient. He knows everything. So if you're going to get advice from somebody, number one, you want to make sure you go to someone who sees the end from the beginning. And number two, you want to find someone that's smarter than you. How many of you, like if you are into investing, and I don't know if you are or not, but if you are into investing uh, and you wanted to make wise choices and decisions about investing, wouldn't you go to somebody that's smarter than you that really knows that area and get their input? Well, hey, God's smarter than everybody. And so you can trust him just because of the fact that he knows everything. That was number two. Number three, the third reason you can trust God is that God has a good plan for your life. That's Jeremiah 29, verse 11. The Lord is speaking through Jeremiah the prophet, and he says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Uh, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, it says this, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So God has a good plan for your wife, for your life. Your, 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 uh, your, your will for your life is not as good, no matter how good you can think of it, is not as good as God's will for your life. God has a good plan. So the third reason you can trust God is because he has a good plan for your life. That's why you and I need to submit to God, yield to God, turn our life over to God, because God has a better plan than you. You may have sat down and you've got your, you know, 80-year plan that you've wrote out about your life and what you want to do and all that, but no matter how amazing it might be, it's never better than the plan that God has for you, right? And now, why is that? Why does he have a better plan for you? Well, he knows you better than you. He knows you better than the closest friend that you have or a family member. God knows you. He knows every cell of your body. He knows every thought that you think. He knows what's going to make you fulfilled and what's going to cause you to be unfulfilled. So God knows everything about you, and he has designed, the Bible actually says in Psalms 139, that he wrote a book about you before there was one day of your life. So God has a good plan. That was number three. Here's number four. The fourth reason that you can trust God is that God paid the highest price to prove his love for you. So the most precious thing and precious person in all the universe, in all in both in the spiritual universe and the natural universe to God is his own son, Jesus Christ. The father loves the son and he wanted to prove his love for us. So what did he do? It says, so God, this is John three sixteen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And so God loves you and paid the highest price for you. 
So if you're going to go to somebody and put your trust in them, would it be in the person, you know, if you have somebody that they sacrifice everything for you to make sure that you're okay, are you going to put your trust in that person? I would say yes. And so God paid the highest price by giving his own son for you. You can count on him that if he did that, in, in, in Romans chapter 8, it says, if God gave his own son, why would he not freely give you all things to enjoy? And so God gave Jesus for you. That ought to be, uh, you know, something that will help you to understand you can trust God. And then here's another one. That was number four. Number five, the fifth reason you can trust God is that God has your best interest at heart. So God is thinking about you. God does have your best interest at heart. John 10.10, 10, right? Jesus said this. He said, he's talking about the devil. He says, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's the devil's will for your life. But he says, but I have come that you might have life and may have it more abundantly. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And actually, uh, another version says, that God wants to give you a life that is above and beyond normal, natural life. He wants to give you a supernatural life. He wants you to give you uh, an exceedingly abundant life. That's his will for your life. So he has your best interest uh, for you and me. He, he's thinking about us. The Bible says the thoughts of God toward us are more than the sand of the sea. Wow. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 and 32 says this. But what shall we say to these things, Paul writes? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not, here it is, he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? That's Romans 8, 31 and 32. So here, hey, who are you going to trust? I'm going to trust somebody that's for me and not against me. So, you know, maybe you're sitting out there saying, one of the reasons it's blocking your trust in God is you think somehow that God is against you. Can I just take that away right now? That is not the truth. The devil's putting that in your head. He's trying to convince you that God's against you. No, he's not. He's for you. God is, if God be for you, who can be against you? So, hey, your heavenly father is for you. He has your best interest at heart. He, want, he has proven his love for you. Now, here's number six. The sixth reason that you can trust God is that, and that is that God is willing to meet your need. Now, most of us don't have a problem with believing that God is able to meet my need. The question is, does he want to meet my need? And uh, one of the best examples, now Jesus, of course, when he walked on the earth, he is God, and he always was God, always will be God, but while he was on earth, he was God, and he literally, uh, for us to know God, to know Jesus, is to know what God is like. In other words, we look, that one verse says that he is the exact representation of his likeness. So Jesus is the exact representation of who God is. And uh, in Matthew chapter 6, verse excuse me, Matthew chapter 8, verses 2 and 3, it says that a leper came and worshipped him. Now, a leper in those days was an untouchable. You did not touch this person. You didn't get around them. They had to wear a, a cloth over their face. They had to yell, unclean, unclean, thus anybody would get near them so they wouldn't get their disease. But the Bible tells us that this leper came and worshipped Jesus and said, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. So there's the question. Is God willing? Did God, are, are you, you know, I, I, he, evidently the leper must have witnessed some miracles that Jesus did. And he understood that Jesus had power. He knew he could heal people. But his question was, are you willing to heal me? In other words, is it within your will? Without hesitation, Jesus answers him. This is Matthew 8, verses 2 and 3. It says, Then Jesus put out his hand to him and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. So sometimes we don't trust God because we think, well, maybe God doesn't want to heal me or God doesn't want to deliver me or maybe God doesn't want to help me. No, the Bible says that he's a very present help in time of need. Jesus went to heaven, sent the Holy Spirit and called him the helper, the one who would come alongside to help us. So yes, God is willing to meet your need. And here's the seventh and final reason that I want to give today in this message, those of you who are jumping on right now, I'm talking about seven reasons that you can trust God. And here's the last one, and that is that God has the power and the ability to meet 
any need that you can come up with, no matter whether it's financial, physical, relational, emotional, you know, uh, pressures on your life. God is the God of all power. He's omnipotent. So there isn't a need that you would have that God could not meet. He can meet. So let me just quickly, before I close this video, uh, I want to just go over one more time the seven reasons that you can trust God. Number one, Understand that God sees the end from the beginning. He knows what's going to happen next week, next, you know, next month, next year. Number two, God is smarter than you. Come on. Number three, he has a good plan for your life. Number four, he paid the highest price to prove his love for you by giving his own son, Jesus. Number five, he has your best interest at heart. Number six, he's willing to meet your need. And number seven, he has the power and ability to meet your need. Now, these are reasons that you can trust in God. So like, I want to pray in closing of this video. Maybe you've had a struggle in trusting the Lord. I'm going to pray that, you know, when the enemy wants to come in and steal, kill, and destroy that I mentioned earlier in the message. And one of the things he wants to steal is your trust in God. And so I, I believe God wants to restore your trust in the Lord. Again, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't depend on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight, or he will guide you into his perfect plan. So let me pray for you right now. Father, I pray, uh, Lord, any uh, against any spirit of distrust, any spirit of, of, of fear, or whatever would block us from not trusting God or thinking that God is not for us, Lord, I pray for each one hearing that there will be a new level. I pray you release the spirit and ability to trust in the Lord with all their heart and see you work in their life. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings that we have when we trust in you. I pray for everyone listening now in the name of Jesus. Maybe you're, this is the first time you're hearing a message and you need Jesus in your life and you haven't given your life to Jesus because you thought, well, if I give my life to Jesus, he's going to mess it up. No, nope, you already messed it up. You don't need Jesus' help to mess up your life. He didn't, he didn't come to mess us up. He came to fix us up. He came to change us. He came to transform us. He came to come in our life and make us new creations in Christ. So I want to pray for you even now. If you haven't received Jesus, today is the day for you to put your trust in him, believe in him, to say, God, I need you, Jesus. I ask you to forgive me, come into my life, change my life, make me one of your people, one of your disciples, transform my life, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, again, it's Fred Crop coming to you from the Healing Rooms here in Santa Maria, California. And again, make sure you always remember that the Father loves you, Jesus loves you, and I love you. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters.